Welcome to Goliath. My name is Chris, and today we're talking about a new reference design built by my coworker Mike over here. And uh, we're going to be uh, talking through some of the implementation details and where you might see this used out in the world. Mike, what was some of the motivation between behind making a greenhouse-based reference design? So when you look at uh, agriculture and the way that we're uh, producing crops in greenhouses and other help, help full environments that aren't just out in the open, uh, it matters a lot the light levels that the plants are getting and the temperature and uh, environmental conditions that they're grown at. And so if you have the ability to switch on some very simple uh, machinery in a greenhouse, you can really affect the yields for the crops that you're growing there. And for this reference design, we wanted to start simply, but it can easily be scaled up for anything that you're looking at. But almost every greenhouse, even if it's just in someone's backyard, has the ability uh, to do ventilation, whether it's opening uh, or closing a damper or a fan that turns on or off. Uh, and then some greenhouses have the ability to do grow lights, especially at the industrial level, and you're gonna be supplementing the natural light. So if you're late in the season and you're in a greenhouse and the sunlight isn't uh, for quite as much of the day as normal, you can have a system that turns on the grow lights. You wanna be as efficient as possible with that. And so our reference design does that by actually measuring the light intensity levels and allows you to set that remotely. And I think that this is uh, an interesting application for it because if you're gonna change crops at some point, you can then have like a growth profile for those crops that gets loaded in. It's the same hardware, the same controller, but from the cloud side, it makes the greenhouse behave differently. Yeah, that's great. And I think kind of zooming out even from that, like Goliath, we make a lot of solutions for a lot of different things. And this is one implementation of it. But if you kind of zoom out and say like, this is sensor readings and relays turning on. And, and so that alone could be generalized to a lot of different applications. We're in the ag tech space here on this reference design, but it doesn't have to be that for everything. Yeah, and I think, you know, the, the loop that you're looking at is we have an IoT sensor. Uh, we also have an IoT actuator. And we decide, do I want to have a threshold at which I'm actuating that relay or do I want to control it manually? And just looking at those three items and how you work with them has a ton of different applications. That's great. So can we talk through what some of the uh, some of the, what it looks like inside the box, perhaps? Yeah, I actually have the box closed up for the demo, but I took a picture uh, here earlier and you'll see uh, we have what we call our Aludel Mini is the baseboard, the green board at the bottom and underneath that is a uh, cell modem, the NRF 9160, which is connecting that to the cell network. On top that you see most prominently are two of these Microelectronica click headers. The one on the right is a relay click header, and this is actually mains rated, which is <laughs> pretty bonkers. Uh, because it's on my desk, I didn't put uh, mains devices into this. I'm just using some five volt LEDs to demonstrate it, but we can pretend that they're 110 volt uh, fans and, and grow lights. Uh, the click on the left that says weather click, that is a uh, BME 280, I think, uh, temperature, pressure, humidity uh, sensor right there. And then you can't really see it in this view. I'm going to change just a little bit here. Um, you can see kind of in the upper left along the side, there is a light sensor um, that is a AP DS 9960 that does, uh, it does light intensity as well as red, green, and blue that we're using for the light sensor. Um, and I think I have a view of that. You can actually see that it gets a view uh, through a hole in the side of the case. You could put a lens on it to protect it. And for this one, I just have it going straight through a hole on, on the case. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think uh, we, you know, we make these reference designs as kind of like a, as an idea, we hope to inspire other people to build out their own products around it. We kind of talk about a business in a box. That's what we always think about. This is not an end usable thing. This is not anything we sell, but this is, something that you could use to go, go and inspire you for your designs. And like Mike said, then you can go and harden it for the harsh environments, greenhouse a little better than outside, but all of the things that we build are not IP rated or anything like that. They're just uh, a lot of, a lot of different hardware to make your thing go and test out a yeah. concept. But they, I mean, they are customer inspired. So, you know, we're, we're having talks with people that have applications that they need. And we say, you know, it'd be nice if we just had a, uh, a firmware sketch that we could hand out to someone. And as we start to flush those out, we want to actually build them into a repeatable piece of hardware and, uh, you know, the cloud tools, the dashboard and controls like that. And so that is kind of the genesis for the reference designs at Goliath. Definitely. Well, let's dive into seeing this, this in action. What does it, uh, what does it take to get this thing up and going? 
Well, actually, you'd plug it in and it goes, which is a pretty nice way All to right. do things. Uh, so for the demo right here, I um, like I said, I'm not plugging it in the mains voltage. So we have the uh, the center right here. It is fully enclosed. Uh, it has the the temperature and it has the light on the side, and the relays are inside. And we're just uh, switching a vent and a light. Uh, I do have also a Grafana dashboard going for this one. So you can see this is live data right now, and uh, we have the light levels that's getting a little later in the day. So I think the light levels have been kind of falling as the natural light in the room has fallen. And I also do have automatic control for both of these. And because of the thresholds that are set, uh, 900 lux in the case of the light, we see that the grow light is on. And for the temperature, 20.50 uh, degrees Celsius, it is about 27.4 in here right now. And so we, uh, the ventilation system is on to keep it from getting too hot in our greenhouse where I happen to work uh, we can look we can add in I just have a little uh little light on the side and if I bring it over here we should see um, the light intensity level go way up and we're going to see the the grow light switch off um I heard it switch and I haven't seen it update yet it showed us off on on my view of it oh yeah okay so it has it has shown us off I'm not sure why we're losing the bit of the graph here but we should have seen the the light spike there uh, and so we do see that the, the grow light has gone off. Now, normally what I do is put my finger on the temperature sensor, but it's enclosed in the case, which is nice because you get a little bit of isolation um, from small temperature changes in the room. So we're not going to be able to see that turn on and off. But what we can do is we can go to the settings on our Goliath dashboard and we can change our threshold. So if we said, you know, let's this for this particular plant, it can get to 27.35 Celsius. And if we switch that and we go back and look at our uh, dashboard, we should say the ventilation system will turn off because we're not up to that uh, threshold temperature yet. Actually, we might be up to that threshold temperature. I might need to set it a little higher. Let's say we needed it to be 29.45. And we should see that ventilation system go off as the light on our demonstration model just went off. There it goes. Now, the other thing is you might want to be able to control these uh, manually. And so uh, there are settings that you can you can control here to turn on and off. The other thing I should mention is all of the settings that I have in this screen on um, the Goliath dashboard are, it's possible to change them all for every device in your fleet or for groups of devices in your fleet. So if you have several of these units throughout a large uh, greenhouse, you can change them all at once with one click. Uh, and when it comes to manual control, you're going to want to be able to change uh, one device at a time. So if we look, we have a grow light on and a ventilation system off. If we go to our desired and we say, hey, let's set our ventilation system to off and we submit that change, we will see that come up. Did I just set the wrong one off? Let's set them both off. There we go. Now we have both of them off. And so it's really kind of simple when you think about it, but it is profound in the fact that you can do it remotely and you can do it programmatically. And so you can, um, like I said, line it up for a different crop profile when you um, change over after harvest. And uh, I think that makes your greenhouse go a lot further than it used to. That's right. So Mike, can you tell us a little bit of what's what's happening under the hood of the of the actual hardware? Like, so there's the Goliath setting service and the light DB state like you showed there. But what actually happens in the in terms of the processing and and the kind of the example code that's underneath the, the hood on the NRF9160? Yeah, so what happens is we we have another setting in here that is a loop delay setting, which is the, the loop on how often it's taking sensor readings. I have it set to five seconds right here, but you can change that for whatever you want. We can see that those settings are streaming in. Um, and so you have a chance to get at all of that raw data if there's anything that you want to do with it. You know, we're using it for graphing and we're also using it um, for the threshold changes, although those are all done on the device. You could have some kind of business logic that is processing those. Um, and if we turn this on to real time, we can see that data coming in a little bit at a time. Uh, there is also the ability to press a button on uh, the device itself. It's down here by the uh, USB cable that button forces a reading. And so if you're in the greenhouse and it's gotten dark and you're wondering why the lights aren't coming on, you can force a reading and it'll automatically update for what the current settings are. That's great. Uh, yeah, I um, I was thinking on the, the Zephyr side of things. So the fact that this is a, a, a project running Zephyr as well. So it's basically processing these inputs and then um, taking the action locally, locally on the hardware. 
Yeah, so we do have uh, everything running on different threads. So I have the main system thread is running uh, the sensors. So it's just uh, going to sleep and, and processing those. It has another thread that's running to Goliath. It's listening for any commands that might be coming in. And uh, I think it has another sensor or another thread uh, that is running the comparison between a sensor reading and uh, what the actual outputs of the relays are so that it can, uh, you know, nothing blocks its ability to turn the ventilation and grow lights on or off. Great, great. Well, this is a really good demo here. And I think uh, I think people will be able to take this sort of thing and actually build out a project of their own if they really wanted to. Is there anything else people should know about uh, building out this greenhouse reference design? You know, it's pretty straightforward. I think that if you're interested in um, having something like this that has remote device control or remote sensing, uh, like you said, business in a box, this is a, an example that you could really take and run, run with, and we'd love to talk to you about your project. All right, great. Well, people can find out more on the Goliath blog. That's blog.goliath.io. You can always ask us questions at forums.goliath.io, and we'll see you in the next video.